Here's the second video in our sequence of how to get ready for the Chapter 2 test. The first video, if you already watched it, focused completely on finding derivatives in different formats using product rules and quotient rules and, and doing trig problems and implicit differentiation. This review video is a little different. This is still using differentiation, but for, more for a different purpose. So you'll kind of see the wording is a little different. It's not just a matter of saying, find the derivative. So the problem you're looking at right now says to find all of the x values of this particular function that have a horizontal tangent line. You would have seen problems like this in one of your past homework assignments. Horizontal tangent line means that its slope, because that's what a tangent line is, has to equal 0, because that's what a horizontal line looks like. It's a line that has a slope of 0. And so we want to find the place where I have a slope of 0. Now, hopefully you know that slope comes from the derivative. The derivative is the equation that gives us a formula to find slope of the tangent line. So the first thing I'm going to do is def derive this polynomial. And it's a pretty easy derivative, because you don't have any higher level derivative rules. So power out front, power 1 less power out front, power 1 less, and then the derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking to see when does this derivative equal 0. So when does the derivative that represents the slope of a tangent line equal 0, meaning it has a slope that is 0, a horizontal tangent line. At this point, you have a couple options. If you want, you could use the quadratic formula. I would always advise trying to factor it first, because most of the problems you will see are factorable. So we're going to put a 3x and an x. We need to get a negative 2, so I'm doing minus 2 and a plus 1. Do a quick check to make sure that it does boil correctly, which it does. And what you'll notice is you have two values. You have x equals negative 1 third and x equals positive 2. Those are the two places where the derivative equals 0. Now, the problem could go a step further and actually ask you for that point of tangency. If that's the case, then you have to take these x values and plug them into your original function to get the y values. Uh, if you have calculator access, you could do that on your calculator. If it's a non-calculator problem, then it has to be something that you're capable of entering by hand. The second problem, and this review video is only two problems, and they are very much related, deals with particle motion, a very common AP type question. It says that a particle moves along the x-axis at time greater than or equal to 0, basically just saying that you can't go back in time. Its position is given by the following function. And a lot of times, position function will either use s of t or x of t. On uh, this one, I chose to use s of t. And it gives this function. It is using t because it's representing time. I, if you would rather put it in x, as you can. But it is nice to see the t's, realizing what t actually means time. And the question wants to know at what time or times is the particle at rest. So now we're thinking about the position and its relationship to movement. And what you should think about from what we've done before is that if you take position and you derive it, you get an equation that represents velocity. And that's what I want to look at. I want to look at the velocity equation. So I'm going to take the derivative of my position function. And another one that is an easy derivative is just the basic power rules. Power out front, power 1 less, power out front, power 1 less. And then the derivative of 40t is 40. And at rest means it doesn't have a velocity. It's not moving to the right or left. When you talk about moving along the x-axis, it either has to go right or left. This is not moving at all, meaning its velocity is 0. Just like the idea of the previous one, a horizontal tangent line. Same thing here, but now we're talking about its velocity, its rate of change being 0. At this point, again, you can use the quadratic formula. I would definitely try to factor. If you look at this, you can take out a 4, which is going to make it a lot easier to factor. You get t squared minus 7t plus 10 and then try to FOIL factor with that, you get t minus t minus, and it's going to be 5 and 2. Do a quick double check to make sure that that actually does factor correctly. And then you have two t values. And they are both positive, which is fine. If one of them was negative, you would throw it out, because you can't go back in time. So there are two times in the interval, which is anything from 0 up, that the particle is not moving at rest, meaning it has a zero velocity. So there's two examples of how a question can be asked on a differentiation test where it's not really the derivative that's difficult. It's just making sure that you understand what to do with the derivative once you find it.